But did you know that Tonic is now hailed as one of the best funded fintechs in the Philippines? With 44 million US dollars funding raised to date, guys. Again, hindi na naman biro ang number na to. That's 2.2 billion pesos in funding, guys. And their mission is to revolutionize the way money works through an all digital way of banking that is highly secure. And I'm sure you're all as curious and as excited as I am to learn more about what neo banking really is because this is what tonic bank really champions right now so today we are all super lucky to have greg krasnov the founder and ceo of tonic bank to familiarize us with their business their mission and culture and of course the job opportunities available for you and to join one of the best fintech companies in the region so a little bit about greg is that so Greg, as I said, is the founder and CEO of Tonic, the first neo bank in the Philippines. Tonic is backed by major international venture capital investors, including Sequoia Capital and Point72. Prior to Tonic, Greg co founded and chaired multiple other successful Asian fintech companies like Forum, um, Credo Lab, Flow, Solar Home, Asia Credit, and a consumer bank in emerging Europe, Platinum Bank. An entrepreneur at heart, Greg launched his first business at the age of 18, earning his way through college through coding and PC repair. You guys can relate to that. Um, at the beginning of his career, Greg spent 10 years in private equity, leveraged buyout at Bank of America in London and Innova Capital in Warsaw, Poland. Recognized as an Asian Fintech Director of the Year by the Asia Fintech Awards 2021, Top 12 Fintech Leader in Singapore, SFA 2021, and Financier of the Year in Ukraine National Awards 2011. During a sabbatical, he also skippered a sailboat across Asia for two years full time. He's also a Spotify published down tempo chill out musician. And of course, he's also a long standing member of the Young Presidents Organization and the founder of its Kiev <coughs> chapter. He's happily married with one child and a global citizen who has resided in eight countries and three continents and is fluent in English, Polish, and Russian. Hold on. I don't have COVID, but I really have bad cough. Thank you, guys. So, Greg, are you here? Yes, Cass, I'm here, and thank you very much for such an illustrious introduction. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you take it away so I can cough myself to death after this. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Yeah, thank you, guys. It's uh... And it's super hard for me to be talking after that uh, very pretty girl video and Dubai, Dubai. And, you know, I, I unfortunately, my Tagalog doesn't catch up with that. Uh, so I'll have to deliver this in English. Um, but yeah, you guys get a special preview of our marketing campaign, which we're hopefully going to launch in the next couple of weeks. That's a video from that. Um, so let me share with you a couple of slides, if I may. Um, okay. Uh, do you see my slide? Yes, no? Yes, uh, Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, what is Tony, guys? What are we building? Uh, you know, we're a neo bank, which basically means we're a bank delivered purely through a digital uh, platform. We have no branches, no physical points of presence. Um, and uh, we have our own digital bank license, which Banco Central actually treated us as the um, uh, pilot for giving us a rural license, but enabling us to run a purely digital basis uh, uh, bank on the back of that. Uh, and now we're being converted into one of the first uh, uh, digital digital bank licenses that they've created um, at the central bank. Um, we're building one of the top retail banks in the Philippines. Uh, basically, we're uh, very ambitious guys. And we think that um, you know time has come for people to take their financial affairs into their own hands. And uh, nobody ever wants to go to a bank branch again, as far as uh, you know. I know uh, people are really pretty fed up with um, you know the physical branch experience, and everybody's doing everything in their smartphone. So why shouldn't we do all of our banking through the smartphone? So we think that uh, that uh, consumer uh, demand is there to support us becoming one of the biggest banks in the country over the next few years. Um, and I'll talk about it a little later. So our first couple of months of operation, they confirmed that. Um, 
the market, uh, and let me uh, talk about that for a little while. Uh, the market in the Philippines is uh, what attracted me and my colleagues to it to begin with. It's a huge, huge market that we're targeting. Um, we're mainly focused on you know, lending and deposits. That's kind of our mainstay. Uh, and for uh, deposits, it's already a $180 billion retail deposit market with everybody that has deposits in the banks basically fed up because the banks don't pay anything on those deposits. You know, I don't consider 1% as adequate compensation for you know, your hard earned money. Um, and so everybody is looking for a way to invest their money at a higher interest rate. So we're offering you know, up to 6%. And we've seen that the customers really appreciate that. At the same time, you know, 70% of the Filipino population remains unbanked, uh, doesn't have a bank account. So um, uh, we're hoping to bring these people into our app um, and into the banking system. And then uh, there's an enormous potential to deploy all that money as loans because Filipino banks don't typically lend to anybody who doesn't have a bank account. And that just happens to be 70% of the country. So um, to lend to these um, individuals, you need to use um, what's called digital footprint. You need to use alternative data, um, you know, things that are, you know, in your smartphone, things that are a footprint that you live in the temco, a telco network. Um, and we know how to do that. And we're analyzing our customers' data to enable uh, credit scoring so that we can score these customers and provide loans to people who haven't taken loans before and who the banks will not deal with. And we do that at interest rates that are uh, much, much better than the five sixes, or it's also like not as painful as borrowing from friends and family, which is actually what most of these people end up doing. So that's that's the market opportunity we're targeting. Uh, a couple of words about our product. Yeah, as I said, our two main products are deposits and loans. So think of, you know, loans is how we make money. Deposits is the fuel for making those loans, right? We need to bring in money. That's our raw material for making the loans. Uh, and then obviously there's a payments infrastructure, which is your typical current account. We call it the tonic account. We onboard into that account in five minutes. We immediately give you a, a virtual card. We're about to enable uh, you being able to offer uh, order a physical debit card as well. So you can take from an ATM. We have interbank transfers. Uh, and we're working with all the big uh, pawn shops and 7-Eleven so that you can cash in, cash out at about 10,000 agent uh, points of sale uh, across the country. And in the deposit product, we have some innovative features. Uh, we're the first guys to bring term deposit into a purely digital execution. So our customers love that. You know, the other, uh, even the pseudo challengers, as I call it, pseudo digital banks, they don't have that. And we brought something called Stash and also a group Stash. Product. So um, stash is the concept that you saw in the ad. That's the uh, D by D by. That's that's where you put money for different uh, needs, you know, into separate envelopes. So we take that basically online and we say, hey, you can create a stash, you know, separate stash for your emergency need, separate stash for you know your brother's motorbike, uh, separate stash for your grandpa's roof repair, uh, whatever you want really. And if you want to put a picture on it to make it more memorable, and you earn money on that. Um, and the group stash is uh, where you can also bring your friends, family uh, into those stashes and save together because we see that, you know, obviously in the Philippines, we do a lot of things together. Uh, it's a very, very communal culture that we have. So, uh, uh, you know, people also save together a lot. And uh, that's a way for people to do that online. And that's another thing that, you know, none of the existing banks are offering anything close to this. So um, how do we compete with this exciting product range? Well, I mentioned very quick onboarding. You don't have to go anywhere. For all we know, you're sitting on your sofa in your living room and you just go this uh, one, two, three, scan the ID, take a selfie, boom, you got a bank account. Um, that's pretty unique. Uh, and if you don't want to give us an ID, you don't even have to do that. You can even onboard just on the selfie. Uh, and then we'll ask you for an ID later. In the meantime, you'll have some limitations on what the account can do, but you can also open just to that. Um, very easy top-up options. Uh, we're non-bank-like. You know, we're the only bank with, uh, as far as I know in the world, with sense of humor as one of the corporate values. Um, so that makes us very, very different than uh, most of the Filipino banks. All you have to do is look at our website and you'll see that the way we're communicating, the way we try to, um, talk to the consumer is, is, is really uh, very open, very frank, first name basis, 
um, and, uh, and very honest, which is another one of our corporate values. I'm not gonna bore you with background about myself. Thank you again, Cass, for introducing me um, so prominently. Um, our organization, um, we are uh, not kids anymore. The senior guys in the team, we're all in our 40s, for better or worse. You know, we kind of have learned a couple of things along the way. So we know what we're doing, or we like to think so. Um, and um, uh, we have a bank license from the Banco Central uh, in the Philippines. We're insured by PDIC. So uh, government insures the deposits that people leave with us. Um, we operate out of a few hubs. Uh, so we're not a purely Filipino organization. Uh, we have a hub in Singapore, which is actually where I'm based and where a few of our uh, key uh, tech architecture and product people are based. Um, we do most of our R&D in India. Uh, we have a team, a very fast growing team that's gonna be uh, about 70 people in the next uh, month or so uh, in Chennai, in India. Um, and we also have a small hub in uh, Ukraine, in Kiev, uh, where we do some of our UX and uh, some back office functions. So in total, we're now not 150, but we're close to 200. Um, and we continue to be growing and we continue to hire. Um, basically the functions that we're hiring most actively in uh, the Philippines are uh, the contact center, the back office, um, and some of the IT functions. And I don't know if uh, Wang is on the line, uh, our chief people officer, maybe she'll talk a little more about that. Um, but while I'm on the organization, let me talk a little bit about the values, because um, we talk a lot about that to our team and our customers, and it's really, really important to us. So we're different. Um, we're different from a typical bank. We have five corporate values, and everybody that we look for, we look for a very good, strong fit with that. So we look for people that can really identify with these values. Number one is team. So people who are very individualistic and won't drive for individual result, they would not do well in our culture. But if you're good at working with others, then you know we are a good place to work. Uh, reliability is another thing that we value very, very much. You know, if you promise something, you deliver. Um, you know, we don't like people who are wishy-washy and can't execute, and we don't take these kind of people. And if we take them, then they don't stay with us very long. So if you come to work with us you know that you know the people that you will be working with that they will do what they promise um and if not then you can point to the slide on the wall say reliability where's the tonic reliability um the third one as i mentioned is a sense of humor and as i said i think we're the only bank not just in the philippines but the only one i've heard of that said sense of humor is important you know we all need to have a bit of distance to ourselves um, so sense of humor is in our branding. It's in how we communicate. Uh, you know, life is hard and it's, uh, you know, you really, without the sense of humor, it's just too difficult. So uh, we'd like to uh, maintain positive emotions around ourselves uh, and not to take ourselves too seriously. So if you like people with a sense of humor, you know, it would be a good place to join because we really value that. Um, honesty. Um, we value honesty, open communication honesty and honesty is part of reliability, but it's also integrity. Um, you know, we're a bank, you know, we can't afford to have situations where, you know, people are not being upfront or people are defrauding, et cetera. Um, so if people are not honest with each other, then they cannot be reliable and they cannot be good team members. Um, and finally, we're looking for people who are street smart. Uh, you know, street smart, it means, uh, you know, people who use their experience to really act um, uh, on their experience and not only on bookish learning. So that's about our values. If you think that this describes you, then please, by all means, come and apply. Um, as I mentioned, we're one of the best funded fintechs in the region. And uh, we've had some pretty amazing traction so far. Um, we've uh, raised about um, uh, $40 million from investors, but we also have now almost $40 million from our clients. Um, of deposits. And we did that in less than two months. Um, so uh, that's a pretty unique track record. In the first month, we raised 20 million deposits from our clients. Uh, so that means customers trust us. They really like what we do and what we offer. So guys, yeah, let me uh, stop here and uh, see if there might be any questions. 
Greg, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people here saying they have tonic accounts. Um, they really love um, how seamless it is to try, I think, to cash in money from Gcash and all that stuff. So you guys, um, they're the newest sexy fintech company in town and the newest sexy bank um, around. Um, there's actually a question here, super fun. Um, why do you call your customers love? <laughs> I think they noticed that and they want to know. Yeah, because um, uh, look, we don't want customers to just open an account with us. Uh, we want customers to fall in love with us. Um, you know, we aspire to a greater standard uh, and we want them to create, you know, initiate a, their neo-banking romance. You know, um, we, we wanted also to come out with a hashtag of, uh, you know, hashtag uh, dump your ex bank. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we thought that might be a little too aggressive. So um, uh, we just came <laughs> with a new hashtag neo banking romance. Right. Dump your bad romance. And, you know, exactly. she's tonic back. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're going to go through QA. Um, and, uh, there's a different approach here, guys. Has so if you have any questions, someone from my team will send in a Slido link, um, so you can stay anonymous. Kung, I don't know lang ha, but I don't think you guys are shy type. But if you are, if you still are after how many hours that we've been here together, <laughs> feel free to go to that Slido link. Or also, if you want to chat your questions directly in the chat box, feel free to do so. We're also here. Um, we're also inviting Wang. Hi, Wang. Wang Madalaysay of Tonic. Um, she Hi. is the chief. Hello, she's the chief people officer of Tonic. So, guys, I want you to practice what you learned earlier from Idea Space. What questions do you want to ask Tonic to reveal their culture? <laughs> so that's the challenge, guys. Huh? Um, we really want to understand. Um, so Greg and Wang, thank you. <clears throat> thank you so much for being here. Um, what we really want um the people here to feel is that this is a dialogue with you that this is not a one-sided conversation, that they can actually ask you questions. So while we wait, I'm, I'm just checking out Slido here, but while we wait, okay, super funny. Uh, someone really practiced already what was taught earlier. So Ruth is asking, Wang, um, yes. maybe not for Greg because he doesn't have a choice, right? He's the founder. <laughs> what makes you stay in Tonic Bank? Me. Yes. <laughs> I guess uh, my boss is one of the primary reasons why I stay. If I hate my boss, I won't be staying. So, <laughs> no joke. <laughs> no. Uh, nice try, Wing. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Sip sep, as we say in Tagalog. No, honestly, uh, I've worked in a lot of companies and um, one of the primary reasons why I stay is really the team that I have. Um, it's in this pandemic, you know, you feel like every day is a struggle mentally. And it's uh, the culture that I that we have in culture uh, in, in tonic makes it all better. Um, we go as mentioned by Greg, we don't really take ourselves too seriously. We take our work seriously, but we take don't take ourselves too seriously. So I guess that's one of the things that we do to manage the, the stress. Um, so there, uh, aside from Greg, <laughs> <laughs> aside from Greg, Greg is the key. <laughs> when flattery will get you nowhere and you know that, come on. <laughs> oh, you guys know already when you actually get interviewed by Greg, flattery will get you nowhere. You guys. Absolutely. Huh? <laughs> Reliability, honesty, sense of humor will get you places. Flattery, no. <laughs> <laughs> Practical advice from a good man. <laughs> All right. Um, true, so true. there's a there's a question here, right? I'm um, from Clarence. Um, what does Tonic focus more on? Is it skills building or culture building? Or if it's both, how do you go about it? So do you focus on building the skills of your people or making sure that you know everybody's like just really taken care of first? Uh, yeah, I guess I can take that one, Wing. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not an either or, guys. It's both. Uh, it's very much both. And what we do is, um, you know, culture is a thing, you know, culture values, it's a thing that's really hard to teach. Um, so basically, uh, values is something we look for in people at the recruitment stage. And then we work with people to make sure that they understand that you exhibit these values, you get the good stuff, you get the promotions, you get the trainings, you know, you get all the like positives. 
Um, and if you don't exhibit the values and you act counter to our values, then that's not going to be good for you. And ultimately, you know, it's like a family, you know, in a family, it doesn't like, you know, if, if you behave in a way that is not consistent with the family norms, you know, with the values of the family, then the family is going to push you out ultimately. And it's going to tell you this is no good. Um, so what we're trying to get to is that it's not about me telling people how to behave or Wang telling people. But the kind of people that we bring together, they create the culture, which then is conducive to people exhibiting certain values more openly. And, you know, then they feel more at home. And then we all kind of feel like, okay, this is our, our thing, you know? So if somebody comes in and they're a really stiff banker and doesn't have much of a sense of humor, he's going to have a hard time, you know? Because um, the organization is going to go, oh my God, who is this guy? You know, he's not one of our toners and types. Uh, so we don't really want to work with them. So that's basically how the culture works. Now, in terms of skills, uh, we definitely mm -hmm. look for people to have basic skills, you know, for the job that they're being interviewed for. Um, and, you know, when it comes to contact center, there's probably more flexibility because these are a lot of time entry-level positions. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, when it comes to you being on the job, then we continue to deliver training and we continue to grow people. And if you continue to deliver performance, we'll continue to grow you. And because we're growing so fast and we'll continue to grow fast, then there's a lot of room for that personal growth and promotions over time and to become, you know, a bigger career path. Actually, to, to, um, to build up on that answer that you just gave, Greg. So um, the demographic of the participants here today are more in the 19 to 24 age range, right? Um, so the question here, um, after what you just said, there's a question here I want to highlight from Alfred. Hey, Alfred. Um, so was there a time that Tonic hired someone who looked like they had no potential initially, you know, but after you spent some time with them, they actually impressed you. Was there ever an example of that? Or if not, is that something that you are sort of willing to, to try out? Yeah, definitely. Um, we do that all the time, guys. You know, we've, we've brought in some people into, you know, position A, then after they've demonstrated what they can do, we've moved them into a position B of higher responsibility, et cetera. Uh, we have quite a few examples like that. Um, you know, we're a growing organization. And of course, for us, it's more effective if we see, you know, a high potential individual, then it's more effective for us to source internally and to help people to continue to grow. You know, we're implementing this process right now uh, for internal assessment. So we've run now um, our first cycle of performance uh, evaluations and, you know, this is a process we're actually implementing where uh, we're looking at all the people in our organization from the point of view of a fit, you know, on values and on performance, right? And then you have kind of these quartiles, uh, the guys that are up on both performance and values, uh, that these guys will be actively looking for how do we grow them? You know, how do we invest in them to help them succeed? Uh, because these are our kind of people, right? Now, people who are delivering neither performance nor values, you know, obviously we're not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. in a high growth organization, you have to rely on internally growing people very much. Mm -hmm. So on that note, right? Sorry, Wang, did you want to ask? Yeah, I just wanted, wanted to give uh, specific examples because mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of questions on the chat box and um, we actually have recently hired a number of flight attendants to, we don't have airplanes by the way we're a bank <laughs> so we've seen their potential and we've actually hired them into our contact center so that's that's the way we think uh we're not traditional as uh, greg said so if we see you have a potential to grow and shift to another role we give you a chance to do just that so uh, we're not stiff and uh, we just want people who are numbers oriented. I'm bad at math, so, but I'm here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, being bad yeah. at math is not a hindrance to joining Tonic Bank after of course, all, because yes. there's so much more opportunities in that. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's reassuring for most of us here. <laughs> um, but um, I'm, I'm also curious because um, we're getting asked this a lot, right? Um. So you say that you grow people internally and you really believe in internal you know, promotions and all these things. Do you have any specific examples of how you grow your people? Like what are the programs there? So for example, you know, you hire people here and they join you. What's a concrete plan that you have for them? Yeah. Um, Wayne, you want to take this one? Yeah. 
Um, as a startup, of course, we don't want to be dishonest and say that we have a you know a standard pro program already or a succession planning program in place. We're not there yet, but I'd like to give the as a as a perfect example. We mm -hmm. our our chief product officer. We actually hired him um, last year to head our to head our product division. But like in three months. Uh, we saw his potential, and from head of product, he was immediately promoted into um, an executive role. So that, I guess that's one of the things that makes it um, nice to work at a at a startup where there are no yeah. set um, you know programs yet. The growth is really very fast. Um, so essentially, what we did was we we already um, put him on the job and saw whether he can do it, and um, Actually, he was promoted um, before the six months of trial period was up. So, wow. wow. So, those are one of the success stories that we've had in terms of. So, to answer your question, I guess we always believe that experience is the best teacher. So, if we see your potential okay. and you can do the job, then I mean, why wait? We give you the, the title already. Well, and I guess that's what makes startups really different from, you know, multinationals and big companies is that once your potential is unleashed and it's proven and people see it, you you actually, you know, you can actually realize the potential much faster than you would probably in traditional companies. So thank you for that insight, Wang. Um, now I think let's go more macro, right? Um, maybe Greg, as a founder, um, I know that you have a lot of experience um, in fintech companies, but I think um, I've seen this in Slido and now I'm seeing it again in, in the Zoom chat. Um, now that you're running a digital bank, right? what are the major challenges that you are facing? Um, I think for us, um, you know, a very big challenge is running under these COVID conditions um, because, um, you know, I haven't actually met physically face to face probably half of my management board, which is super weird. Um, you know, we, we've built the organization and we now have scaled to like 200 people. And out of these 200 people, the ones that I've actually met face to face are, you know, like probably 10 people in the Philippines. And we're now like a hundred people in the Philippines. And I've met like half of the guys in Chennai. And like, you know, by the end of this month, it's going to be probably like 10% of the guys in Chennai, right? Um, so um, that's hard. And I think what's even harder is that you don't have time when you're like working in this kind of a remote mode, um, you don't have time or opportunity to build deeper relationships, you know, with your colleagues. You don't have time for chit chat. You don't have time for like, you know, figuring out who the other person really is finding out about, you know, their family, their brother, their cousins, you know, what's their situation? What do they, what are they like, right? Because you're always like business, business on these Zoom calls, right? Um, so that's a really frustrating thing about COVID for everybody. Yeah, because everybody is working from home so much. Um, but that's also the reason that we're so focused on values when we're recruiting. You know, we try to make sure that the people that we bring in um, you know, that they already selected to be similar to each other by these values. So that makes it easier for people to trust each other. That makes it easier for people to work together. Uh, when you kind of feel that the person on the other end of the Zoom call, yeah, I kind of get that guy, you know, <laughs> like I, I, I feel you, man, you know, like that thing. So, um, so we try to, uh, we try to focus on that. And of course, you know, we try to do a lot of things for integration. You know, we have our happy hours, which are, you know, an online event and you know, we have water cooler things that are also like virtual and all sorts of stuff like that, um, where we try to promote informal communication among our, um, our team members. Um, but that's probably the biggest challenge, but that's not only a challenge for us, you know, for us, it may be, it is maybe easier to deal with that because we built the whole thing in this environment, you know, um, so we're native at this. Whereas, you know, a bigger organization who's like, you know, previously worked in an office, you know, for them adjusting is super hard and for their people, it's super hard. But like, we grew up like this. We don't know any different, you know, we're, you know, digitally native by definition. Um, so uh, it's a tough part, but also a very interesting challenge. 
uh, how to manage that and how to work together in this kind of environment. Like even our contact center, you know, most of the time our contact center the last few months, you know, people were working from home. Um, so they're talking to the clients and, you know, they're still plugged in, right? The supervisors are still there to kind of see what you're doing and, you know, they're, but they're there remotely. And so when you're talking to your supervisor, you know, um, you don't get the non-verbals, for example. So the communication is constrained uh, because, you know, guys probably heard 80% of our communication is non-verbal. Um, so, you know, one thing we instituted at Tonic is, you know, when we are on Zoom or Teams calls, we actually use Microsoft Teams internally, um, that you have to switch on the bloody camera, you know, because otherwise the risk of, you know, people um, like you misreading what somebody said is too high. Uh, so you need to read the facial expression. You need to read the body language. And at least, okay, you don't get my full body language right now. You get like at least this part of my body language. But already that's a lot better than not even getting that, right? Um, so those are some of the challenges we have. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much for that transparency and, and uh, um, candor to all of us here. Um, I, I, I get this question a lot now um, on Slido in the chat again. Um, I, I guess we have a lot of marketing folks here um, who are super interested in how probably if they apply to Tonic, how they can help you guys. So um, there's a question they keep asking. Um, since Tonic is a new name that they that they you know that they hear in the Philippines just recently, and guys, to be fair, they launched in April lang, so chill. <laughs> Am I correct, Greg? You launched last April only. Uh, we launched to the public uh, almost March. exactly two months ago. Two months ago, okay. So guys, chill. But they're super excited. So they're like, how will you encourage you know uh, people to use Tonic? What are the marketing plans that you have in place? Um, to make sure that Tonic really makes a lot of noise? Well, so far, um, we haven't uh, done a lot of noise. Uh, we've relied very much on the kind of word of mouth and, you know, people referrals and virality. Uh, and we've done extremely well out of that. You know, as I said, we had, you know, we already have approaching close to $40 million of deposit, 2 billion pesos. Um, and my business plan for the whole year was to have to be at like, uh, you know, two and a half billion pesos. So, um, we're like in just two months, we've blown away most of the, our budget for the full year. And we've done that with no advertising. Uh, so the only thing that, um, uh, we did so far is, uh, our launch event, uh, when we went, you know, and launched publicly, we had a Facebook live for a couple hours where we showed people the product. And it was hosted by Casey Montero. And of course, you know, everybody loves Casey. And of course, you know, that, that made a bit of noise. And we had a very nice uh, couple of words uh, in a video from a deputy governor of the central bank that spoke about how, you know, digital banking is the future, et cetera, et cetera. But like so far, that's been the marketing that we've done. Um, the last couple of months for us, because we got a lot more business than we thought we would get, um, then it's been more about dealing with the volume and uh, dealing with what that created in terms of our stability of the application and our processes, because we weren't counting on the volume to come in so fast. Um, so uh, our contact center was pretty overwhelmed, you know, with everybody wanting to call in and, you know, text in and say, okay, how do I use this feature? How does this work? How does that work? So, um, you know, basically like uh, our contact center just like dropped to the floor in terms of their performance because they couldn't deal with all that. And we had to like hire 50 more people into the contact center to deal with all that in a couple of months. Um, so pretty crazy speed. Um, and, uh, you know, also in terms of um, uh, issues with our payment partners, we had a lot of kind of buggy stuff happening in the interfaces and a little bit in our app performance as well. And you probably see that in the app store reviews, you know, because like a lot of volume coming in. So we had to deal with some of that stuff. We're now at a point where we're ready to start marketing. I think in the next week or two, we'll launch that campaign. Uh, you know, we have uh, two nice clips and a lot of supporting stuff going out to Facebook and, uh, and other media. Um, and uh, once that marketing goes out, um, then we'll start seeing volume increase even further. Um, and uh, we're using purely digital channels for that. So guys, from the point of view of marketing, uh, you know, what we're looking for, and we are looking for a few vacancies in the marketing team, but we're looking for online skill sets. You know, people who are good at social media, people who are good at, you know, influencer management, that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, the marketing campaign is coming on uh, in about a couple of weeks. 
Um, we're also launching our loan product uh, next month. So uh, that's gonna cause us to go out and start looking for clients and step up marketing. Um, but yeah, look at our website. We are posting vacancies there, I believe. Um, Wang, uh, Wang is nodding, so I know that that's true. Uh, so guys, take a look at the website. You'll see which vacancies we have and yeah, welcome the applications. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go next to, to Wang now. Um, a lot of people are asking, are there internships available at Tonic right now? especially in data analytics and tech? Um, we can. Uh, like I said, we're, we're a, a startup. So in case we see people that will fit into the needs uh, of the bank, uh, we're open to internships. We've actually had several internships, even the ones that are based in the U.S., wherever you are, it's, it's not an issue. <laughs> we can have internships for you. So yeah, awesome. And then I guess there's another question here. Um, what are the available jobs? Like, what are the um, priority jobs that Tonic has over the next six months? We have a couple. Uh, we have a total of 35 FTEs that we're looking for. Um, I don't want to say which are the priorities because I I don't want to play favorites. But the the more <laughs> the more urgent ones are the ones in IT. Uh, we're we're building um, several squads right now, and we're looking for scrum masters, um, business analysts. Uh, those are the the top ones uh, that I have that are very urgent. So, but the complete list is on the Work Bean website. You can go there. In, uh, so I won't miss. I don't want to miss any of the openings that we have. So, like I said, there's 35. I can't remember. I don't remember all of them. So. Yeah, check out um, our either our website or the Workbean website for the open complete list of openings. Awesome. So jargon time, Olet, guys. FTE means full time employee for anyone yes. wondering. So they've 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 uh, experienced a lot of jargons today. So we're doing like an education for all of them as well. So like Wang said, right? Um, you can check out their culture page on the Workbean site. Um, if you want to know more about the jobs that they have. So Wang, maybe one final question would be. Um, how open is Tonic um, in accepting fresh grads um, for the jobs that you have? Oh, we're very open. We've had uh, we've uh, recently hired a couple in our customer due diligence team. So, yeah, I mean, just send in your um, applications. We'll we'll, mm -hmm. we'll try to match you. Um, and then last but not the least. Um, um, are there any school preferences? So we have a lot of um, re universities represented here. Um, that's one of the biggest questions they have. They're like, oh, are there school preferences? Um, what's the hiring strategy like in terms of, you know, universities? I don't have a bias for UP, although I'm from UP. <laughs> <laughs> we try, we, we're, uh, we're open to whatever color <laughs> you are. We want to have a diverse and inclusive uh, workforce, so it's not an issue, really. Thank you. And finally, Greg, um, why why should people choose Tonic? Oh, why should people choose Tonic? Because um, uh, you can grow very fast. Uh, you can learn a lot. You can be in the digital economy. Um, you can do some really, really cool stuff. Um, and you can do that with really cool people uh, that, you know, hopefully you like and you can align with. Uh, what we're looking for is, in addition to the values, we're looking for specific motivations. You know, we're looking for people who want to create, who want to build something new. Uh, you know, people who, you know, the people that just want to do like the nine to five, that's not a tonism, right? We want the people that are really interested in um, building something with us that will be legendary. This is really like internally, that's, you know, we are building a legend. We're explicit about it. We're not modest about it. That's what we want to do, right? Now, if you want to build the legend with us and you're prepared to do what it takes to be a part of that, and you have the ambition to kind of be legendary like that in the future because you were part of this uh, legendary thing, then come and join us. Uh, and we'd love to have you. So that's, yeah, that's a summary. Thank you, Greg. So my question to you guys is, do you want to build a legend? Can you guys take on that challenge? 
Um, so the good thing about the Career Festa community here is they know the importance of excellence, especially you know being a Filipino. Um, we keep talking about this to them, and they know this by heart by now. Filipinos are known for their resilience, but we always push every single one of them to choose excellence every single time. So guys, if you want to build a legend, you know where to go. And it's a common theme now among the startups represented today that working at a startup is not a chill mode. Working at startups will stretch you to the core. Working at startups will challenge you. Um, it will make you fail a lot of times, but it's a matter of how you pick yourself up after that and make yourself better. So if that's you, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are like that, um, you're free to choose any job you want in the company showcases today, especially. Oh, sorry, someone muted me. Anyway, thank you, Greg, and thank you, Wang. Someone wanted me to stop talking, apparently. Um, <laughs> Um, but thank you so much, Greg and Wang, for being here. Um, before before I show you guys the Wokey coins, um, can we just take a quick photo up? Is that okay? Um, Zane? Okay. Hey, Greg. Value review. Guys, open your cams na. Okay, there are two slides. First slide, one, two, three, smile. Right. Second slide. One, two, three. Smile. Yeah. Oh, my bubble. So okay. Oh, my okay. There's one more. Apparently, some more people open their cameras. So one more. One, two, three. Smile. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Wang and Greg. Um. And also, um, did anybody here receive their tonic mobile phone holders? If you did, give us a shout out on the chat box. Come on and thank Tonic for that. It's all them, not us. <laughs> so yes, yes. All right. They did receive their mobile holders. So you guys do not forget. Tonic, you know, if you can create an account now, do so. Um, super, super, super cool features. My entire family is apparently on Tonic now. So um, you guys need to do that too. Um, and also, guys, you didn't answer me. Are you ready to build a legend with Tonic? Because <laughs> apparently someone muted me. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, now, thank you, Greg. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. All right. Um, are you guys ready to claim your Wokey coins? Oh, but before that, if you want to check Tonic, if you want to see their culture, if you want to see their jobs, and you really want to see what it's like to work with them, go to their culture page, um, scan this QR code, or type workbean.co slash company slash tonic dash bank. You'll see buttons in their culture pages just because there's a lot more information that they can provide you. If you're interested to ask for more information there, simply click on the buttons and request that from them. So the more requests that you have, the more you'll convince Wang and her team to provide that information for you. Okay, bye on, guys. Okay. All right. Thank you. Now, <laughs> um, bye, Wang.